Hi everybody, Aaron Drake here to discuss the new features in KOS or Chaos version 0.17. We have a couple, we have a lot of new features in this release that we'd like to talk about, and I'm here uh, at the start of this video to talk to you about a couple of fun ones. They're resource transfers and part highlights. Uh, if you look at this particular test stand craft, we have a bunch of tanks that were attached as a group uh, with radial symmetry. And but they've gave, been given some tags that you were introduced with uh, in one of our previous releases. So we're going to go ahead and get those staged and color them based on their fuel status uh, and a little script. We also have, I guess I might as well show you this little uh, part here. We have a new part. It's a kind of an in-game part. It's a higher capacity um, radially attached part that is pretty nice. It's a, It's been a fun part actually to have. It has a little solar panel on it even. So. As we go through this script, we'll, you'll be seeing tanks change from green, which means they're almost full, uh, to yellow, which is mostly full, and then red, which means they're about to be drained. Uh, so it's more of a visual indicator of the status of the tanks than, uh, than having to look at these, you know, having to right click and look at ch charts. There's actually a couple of different color schemes you can use with KOS. There's uh, RGB or HSV, and they're all, all of the, a lot of the features actually of point 17 are really about managing complexity, adding in new language features and uh, new APIs for dealing with KSP. If you notice there, we actually don't have a staging event that's actually done uh, by getting the action, the decouple action directly from the part and triggering it manually, which you can use for any part, pretty much any button, you know, that appears in the right click menu. So yeah, so like I said, we go from, you know, green, yellow, red, and this is totally custom. This has, you can control anything you like about any part of these colors, the colors, the opacity, um, when you change the colors, anything you want. And, but it's a nice way to get a visual indicator of what's going on in your craft. You can use it for and all kinds of fun stuff. So hope you enjoy the video and I'll see you on the other side. Hello, Stephen Mating here, also known as Dunbaratu on GitHub. So I've been working for the last month on something that I think people would really like. For a long time, people have been really wishing that uh, that we would use scope. Uh, no, not, not that kind of scope. Our breath is fine. Uh, I mean this kind of scope. We now have the ability in version 17, point 17 I should say, to have local variables. So in this example, local p is some expression. We create a new local variable, give it an initial starting value, and poof, it's local. From then on, when we use it, it only exists in this little area, and when we get to the end of the braces, it's gone. So we so a Kerbal script will now have local scoping according to brace scoping rules. You can put a scope anywhere you feel like, and it only lasts until the end of the brace it was declared in. You can still create global variables if you want, or you can create them locally. So everyone's going to be happy about that. I think they've been waiting for that for a long time. One of the main reasons we've been doing this is because, and this is the really big deal, big deal, we now finally have functions. So one of the reasons we needed to have the local scoping is because without local scoping, functions are pointless. Things are no longer all global. So for example, here's a function. You can give it some parameters, open up a squiggly brace, put it whatever you feel like in the body of it, and you can return if you like, and give it a value when it returns and you can make use of it. So that's going to be the new feature that I put into this that I'm really, really happy about. Hey everybody, Aaron Drake here uh, with more new features, but first I wanted to talk about, uh, as we put this video together and we're getting ready for release, the original author of uh, KOS went ahead and he surfaced again, Nevik, and he started uh, producing KOS Classic. And you know, we want to, we wanted to see awesome, cool mods. We're not afraid of competition, uh, but it'd be great to have him on the team. And we've reached out to him many times to try to get uh, one cohesive mod that has all these cool features because he's had some really fun stuff. Uh, I just wanted to get that out of the way. And now I want to talk about this. Uh, the to show docked elements uh, as you get a craft together and you dock multiple pieces together it'd be nice uh, a lot of times it's nice to just for like fuel transfer or whatever to identify what are all the parts that are in this node and this node and this node that you know, are all docked together and this is kind of a little short snippet about how that works so you can see all the different colors and everything of the different units so have a good day and uh, thanks for watching
Okay, so for my first example showing off the use of functions, let's do something kind of nifty but simple. A lot, of the, a lot of people have been wanting to have the ability to get the compass, the pitch, and the roll of a craft, and I've made some little user functions to do that, to show you that it can be done in your own functions now. So here we have a little craft. I will just manually maneuver it around the nav ball here. There I am pointing straight north relative to the horizon there, nice and level, and there you see compass heading near zero, pitch is near zero, roll is near zero. As I roll around, you can see the roll number change. As I yaw around the nav ball, you can see the compass heading changing. Here I am now going due east. And let's flip the other way. Here I am going due west at 270. You can see down on the nav ball all of that. And uh, here I am pitching up above the horizon, which you can see here. Or pitching down below the horizon, which you can see here. Now all that did to make that work is here's the main program. It called a thing called libnavball, which is just another KerboScript program. Prints out this stuff on the screen and in a loop calls these functions compass for, pitch for, and roll for. Compass for ship, pitch for ship, roll for ship, and prints them. That is all it did. The actual work is in the library. The library is nothing more than a KerboScript file that just has function statements in it and nothing else. You run this at the top, they get loaded into your program, and now you can use them. And in this example, all I made them do is just do the math to calculate this stuff for you. And now I have another example of the usefulness of the new functions feature in KOS. Um, one of the things you constantly run across when trying to control things in KOS is the need, need to have a PID controller to make nice, smooth controls of things, a proportional integral derivative controller. Well, we have that now, and uh, I will be including this in the examples on the documentation page. This is a generic PID function. It's a very simple one. It doesn't automatically tune the parameters for you. You just have to pick some and tell it. Maybe in a future iteration we'll make that better. But at any rate... Uh, you initialize it by giving it the tuning parameters you like for your PID controller. It creates some data for, out of that. And then in a loop, you continually call its partner program or partner function PID seek, passing it in that information that you got from PID in it, telling it the value you'd like to seek, telling it the value it currently is at, and it will spit out for you what you should change your input value to for the thing that you're controlling that's supposedly going to affect the. Here's an example where I'm going to use it to do the thing that people always tend to do for, for the first time with a PID controller, and that is attempt to hover. And now the main body of it, all it does is it calls that PID init from the libpid function, or from the libpid file, and uh, then calls PID seek every time in a loop over and over again, and I have it set so when I turn the, the landing gear on, that will kill the script. Until then, it just keeps trying to hover. There it takes off, and it's being and it's adjusting the throttle, trying to reach the altitude of 25 meters, which is the default. Now I have it set up so I can press some buttons here to change the seeking altitude. Let's uh, let's lower it a bit. Make it seek nice and low. There it is, trying to stay a mere nine meters above the ground. It is doing it based upon the radar altitude, not the actual altitude, so as I fly off the pad, it'll fall down a bit there. There we go. So as you can see, it, uh, it's pretty steady, just a standard PID controller. It has absolutely no idea what I'm using it for. It doesn't realize I'm using it to hover a, a robot. Could be using it for anything, it wouldn't really know. Hi, my name is Brad White and I go by the handle HVACENGI, or HVAC Engineer, on the KSP forum, GitHub, and various other sites. I'm going to walk through the new integration between KOS and the stock SAS modes that were released with KSP version 0.90. As you can see, I already have a craft in orbit ready for testing. The syntax is pretty simple, and we tried to keep it as intuitive as we could. There is a new bound variable called SAS mode. You can both get the current variable as well as set the new value. So for starters, typing print SAS mode will return the currently selected mode, in this instance, anti-normal. You set the value the same way you set any other variable, 
So if we want to aim prograde, just type set SAS mode to, and then the string value for prograde. As you can see, the vessel snaps to the prograde vector. I'm going to run a script in the background here that'll run through the various other modes while I explain a couple more items. This script will be made available through the documentation on the GitHub page for KOS. Using these modes is exactly like clicking the UI button for the corresponding mode and as such, they behave the same way. That means that they depend on which type of velocity is selected in the nav ball. So if you switch to target velocity, the prograde vector will be your target velocity instead of the orbital velocity, and the same thing applies to surface. One of the benefits of this update is that lock steering commands will now work even if SAS is turned on. However, if a mode other than stability assist is selected, the stock SAS will fight the lock command. As you can see, I purposefully ran a script in a way that would throw an exception. If you try to select the mode target or maneuver when you have no target or maneuver node, the script will throw an exception. The same is true if you try to use a mode that your current pilot or probe does not have access to in career mode. If we just set the target to the moon, You can see that now set SAS mode to target and set SAS mode to anti-target. Both function properly. Hello, Stephen Manning again. I would like to give a shout out to some of the people who were unable to participate in this release video. We put out the call toward the end saying, hey, anyone who contributed to the project and would like to make a few clips for us to piece together is free to send us a video clip to put in this. Not everyone was able to do that, so I'd just like to take a moment to give a shout out to some of the contributors who uh, didn't have a, a place in this video. Okay. Um, of particular interest is Stepan Andreev, I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, um, who goes by the handle ZIW Kerman on GitHub and a few other places. And he has jumped in in the last few weeks and really uh, come up being quite a powerful contributor to the project. And he really just, uh, he's added quite a few things to us. If you notice that the KOS toolbar window no longer appears when you uh, leave to the space center and no longer get stuck on the screen. That was him that fixed that. If you go in and notice that, hey, look, there's now support for the Kerbal Alarm Clock mod where you can get information about when your alarms are about to go off and you can set alarms through Kerbal Alarm Clock. That also was him. If you notice that there's better support for remote tech, that was also um, him, along with Aaron Drake as well. Uh, if you notice that we have an interesting new in infrastructure for how we deal with add-ons, that was him. Uh, if you notice that there is now another tutorial for how to do the execute node function, which is a sort of a generic thing everyone wants to do, and there's a tutorial to help people walk through that, that also was him. And if you notice that we now also have the ability to have a tweakable amount of disk space, that also was him. You can now have one times, two times, or four times as much space as the default setting if you're willing to pay a little bit of extra cost in the sense of electrical charge and mass. So the ability to do that, which is going to be really handy when you start having library functions, uh, that was him too. So I just wanted to give a shout out to him. He didn't have time to do a video for this, but uh, he certainly has joined the project and helped. I'd also like to give a shout out to Sir Dazio of uh, Action Group's extended fame. Um, he came in and gave us a little bit of code to help work along with his project a little bit easier and wrote up this page describing for people how they can do that. Um, we can give out a shout out to Conrad Bortecki who helped integrate our mod into the Blizzy toolbar so that you can use it with Blizzy toolbar or with the standard stock toolbar from KOS either way. And I'd also like to give a little bit of shout out to some people who joined us near the end and really helped us do a lot of testing. When I did the functions release, I knew it was going to need a lot of regression testing because it has the potential to break a lot of things. And I knew that I couldn't think of all the cases myself. So all these new people came in, 
they were of great help to us. Um, I'm make, going to pronounce some of these names wrong. Uh, Eben Kovskil, Zavi Andino, Andano, Seth Persio, Thomas Williams, also known as TW, TW89, and The Great Fez. All these people joined us in our chat channel and gave me a lot of very good feedback and a lot of very good uh, issue reports on GitHub about the functions feature. And it is largely because of their contribution of testing effort that we were able to get it pretty solid before release. So I just wanted to give them a shout out and say to them, thank you.